Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our talk about the NHS Youth Forum and why you should apply for this year's cohort. So my name is Maddie, and for the past year, I've been a member of the NHS Youth Forum, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what the NHS Youth Forum is and some of the work that we do. I'm now going to hand over to Nikita to introduce herself. Hello everybody, I'm Nikita. So I was part of the NHS Youth Forum between 2019 to 2021 and I've been carrying on one of my projects as well as an alumni member. Um, So I'm going to uh, talk about my experiences in the NHS Youth Forum to give you a flavour of what the Youth Forum does, what the type of things that you might get involved with, to see if this is something that you're interested in. And I'm also going to talk about later on and the skills that I got from this and what the outcome of all of my experiences were. So as I've mentioned, I started in 2019 whilst I was at university. Um, I'm a member of St John as well, as many of you will know. Um, and I've been doing various bits and bobs, but I wanted to expand my advocacy work beyond um, St John Ambulance Youth. Um, with the um, NHS Youth Forum, they get approached by other organisations, for example, the Department for Health, NHS themselves, um, Public Health England at the time, um, and they give us other opportunities as well so it's not just what the British Youth Council organised for the NHS Youth Forum lots of different organisations government charities come and ask um, the NHS Youth Forum members can you guys give us advice they come to consult we get diff get opportunities to work on different projects and one of those was the you're welcome policy so it's an online government policy on how different um, authorities, departments, forums, uh, NHS staff, clinicians, how best to work with young people, how to engage us with the system. And like we improved it because um, it hadn't been updated for about uh, six, seven years. So we added um, trans healthcare, digital healthcare, and that's something like that I personally got to work on and publish. And it's on the government website, which is a really cool thing to have been involved with. Um, as part of my group in the NHS Youth Forum, um, I chose Health Inequalities Group, and we worked on um, producing a report which highlighted the health inequalities of medical education. So we looked at university medical age education and how students aren't getting information about what different diseases look like on different skin tones or cultural education on mental health issues and different communities or how diabetes is more prevalent in one community and not in others and um, we kind of highlighted that in a report and produced a round table which is where we presented our findings um, what was really amazing was I got a network and meet with um, members of the general medical council the chief nursing officers of the NHS and public health England and the medical schools council and it was really great opportunity just to meet senior um, members of like the leadership team who are actively interested in reducing health inequalities. I'm currently in the process of also writing an article for the British Medical Journal, which is the second biggest medical journal after The Lancet. Um, if you don't know what a medical journal is, it's basically where anything new technology in the health sphere or new practices, new policies, um, interesting um, methods, all of that gets published in medical journals so that current doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals or anybody who's interested, including young people like us, can just read about. Um, so, yeah, we're in the process of publishing that. Next slide, please. Um, I'm also uh, working with the I Will Healthcare and Social Care Alliance. So there is opportunity for you to network with other organisations and build your personal networks um, where youth voices like at the heart of it and I also created COVID-19 resources um, during the lockdown um, which was a you know, real privilege to be able to do that and be able to share it with my community and represent my community on a national level as well. Next slide please. So all of that experience is amazing but what did I kind of gain from it all? 
Um, well, the NHS Youth Forum actually ran a reporters academy um, where I received four online training sessions, all for free, on how to create um, engaging content and how to best utilise social media. I got opportunity to practice and use Canva. So I really improved my communication tactics online. I built up my confidence as well by, as I've mentioned, talking to the General Medical Council, talking on a regular basis with members of the NHS. Um, so that was really, really good work experience because I was able to talk about it in future job interviews and things. Um, leadership and masterclass. So they um, run that as part of your um, weekly sessions. There was different sessions every week or every alternate week. And we got to do that. I also received the ASDAN Youth Voice Award, which everybody who joins NHS Youth Forum would get an opportunity to be able to do that. Um, and all of that basically led to other opportunities and job offers because I was able to articulate it in interviews, in job applications. And actually, I today, this morning, I found out I am going to be working for the Employers Health an inclusive unit um, for the government economic service. I will actually be now working in the government, working on health um, health related things. And all of that is because I was able to mention my work with NHS Youth Forum, message on ambulance role, to show them and demonstrate to them, here's why I'm interested in health. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I just wanted to give um my two pence on what I think is the most important thing when joining the NHS Youth Forum and I think firstly it's it's enthusiasm you have to have um that willingness and that energy to represent other people to advocate for yourself for health um, for health concerns for youth matters and I think experience is secondary if you have that kind of passion and enthusiasm because a lot of these skills that I've just discussed you can curate them, you can learn them as you go along in the NHS Youth Forum. The most important thing is having enthusiasm. Um, secondly, being a team player is really important. You're going to be working with people from all walks of life, um, diverse backgrounds, different age groups from the age of 14 to 25. So you have to be willing to work in a team. Um, thirdly, um, do you have the capacity? I know that in St John, all of us love to get involved in every project and everything, but actually the work of the BIC, where I see there's, there's a lot to do. And if you want to take on all those opportunities and make the most of it, um, work out, do you actually have the time to do that? So I definitely um, see first, and do you have the capacity? Um, Kat might have a bit more information on the practical elements and what she's looking for in the applications, but I will take further questions later on. Thank you. We just wanted to add in a little bit now. Um, hi everyone, I'm I'm Kat. I'm the Youth Engagement Manager at the British Youth Council and oversee the um, the NHS Youth Forum. And um, firstly, congratulations on your new job, Nikita. That sounds amazing. A bit of a mouthful, that title. You'll have to tell me again later what it is. Um, but I think you've given a really good overview and a really good flavour of what the NHS Youth Forum is all about. And actually, I would totally agree with all those things that you said that are kind of what you need to join the Youth Forum. Um, and it, exactly that. It's about the kind of passion and enthusiasm and kind of commitment and dedication to wanting to make a difference to um, the healthcare system. Um, and that is that is really genuinely what we're looking for. We um, are really keen to have a diverse representation of young people on the forum. Um, we do have some medical students, but we don't want to have 25 um, high-flying medical students. We want to really ha you know, have lots of different um, kind of ex lived experiences, different career pathways. We want it to be representative of young people generally. Um, and yeah, there are lots of opportunities, as Nikita said, and I think sometimes they can um, sort of maybe sometimes feel a bit overwhelming at times. We try really hard not to to overwhelm you and, and some things are, are optional. Um, this The model for this cohort um, is going to be that we're going to have a couple of residentials included um, because I think that that with COVID things sort of went um, kind of all online but we really want to give more opportunity for sort of in-person um, time together with your um, colleagues on the NHS forum so you can really kind of work out 
what you know build those relationships work out what you want to work on what are your passions what do you want to change um and and kind of go from there so yeah just to kind of re-emphasize really that yeah looking for anyone who is really interested and um if there's any kind of anything that you think might you would require some extra support in please do get in, in contact with us we want to make the whole process as you know easy and as accessible as possible so um yeah please please apply if you're interested Right, so I'll now give a bit more of a basic overview of the NHS Youth Forum, what it is. It's not going to be as exciting as the computers, but it just gives you a bit of a flavour for what it is. So the NHS Youth Forum is a group of 25 young people aged between 14 and 25 years old. So if you're in that age bracket and you're really passionate and committed to improving healthcare experiences, maybe you've had something, you've had a healthcare experience and you thought, actually, you know what? this is the support I really needed or you know what this is a really good idea that can improve it and I'm really passionate to make sure that this is put into action then definitely think about applying experience isn't everything like Nikita said you will gain that along the way the NHS U Forum is a journey it gives you countless opportunities to develop skills that maybe you feel less confident with but if you're passionate and you're committed you will go so so far in the NHS U Forum. So definitely think about applying. So the cycle for the NHS Youth Forum this year lasts seven months. So you start in September 2022 and then you finish by March 2023. So if you're worried about commitments with school, let's say you've got exams or GCSEs, it, you know, you don't need to be concerned about that. You'll be finished in enough time that, you know, you can focus on those educational commitments afterwards. So if that's a worry, please don't be. It really does fit in in the end. Can we go on to the next slide, please? So what does the NHS Youth Forum actually do and what can you do as a member? So as you can see, here are just a few of the opportunities that I've been offered in the past cycle. So consultations, so attending primary care reviews, so by primary care, GP services, you know, community health care, working on how we can improve that, experiences that we've had and suggestions we've come up with and really working with other young people and other people in our communities to improve health care and kind of advocate on the behalf of people who don't have that position. Subgroup work, so something we do in the NHS Youth Forum is we have three groups, which each focus on a different part of healthcare. So we had widening access to higher education this year, health inequalities and digital mental health services. So as you can see, it doesn't just focus on one part of healthcare, there's a wide variety of things you can get involved with and it's really what you're passionate about. Hot topic sessions, so learning more about healthcare or studies going on that you've never heard of before. So vaping, the effects of vaping and how many young people vape, et cetera, et cetera, was one we had. And skills development, like Nikita said, she learned how to use Canva. Before the NHS U Brom, I would never have touched Canva. I would have stayed so far away from it, but I now feel quite confident with it. So if you think, you know, maybe I don't have the skills to join the NHS U Brom, it's a skills development journey. You can go on that journey of skills development yourself and gain that. You just have to be confident enough and passionate about passionate enough to apply. And you definitely should, even if you're thinking, oh, maybe not, like give it a go. And lots of external opportunities as well. So within my first month of joining the NHS U Forum, I was able to speak at the School Nurses National Conference to talk about how much my school nurses had helped me. And that felt like a real privilege to actually say, you know what, they are really amazing and we should, you know, support them more. So as you can see, here's a lot of examples about what you can do if you were to become a member. And this is only a snippet of it. There's so much more that I'm sure Kat and Nikita can tell you all about. So if you've got any questions about that, please put them in the link or just drop an email to Emma Jane. Kat or Nikita, is there anything you'd like to add about NHS Youth Forum? The deadline for applications is this Sunday um, at quarter to midnight and you can apply by going online i can't put a link in the chat here but if you just google byc so that's for the british youth council byc and nhs youth forum it should uh, take you straight to the application page we're going to be moving on to a q a so um in the advert link um there was a form that you could send emails to so please feel free to send in um questions 
And I think Emma Jane has already got a couple of questions for us, so we'll um, get started on that soon. Right, so question number one, Nikita, would you like to answer this? And then Kat, you can jump in. How closely do you work with actual members of the NHS? So um, there's an NHS, um, well, equivalent manager, I guess, and they work pretty much every other session. So you get very close and direct with members of the NHS. Um, when I did my project, the Health Inequalities Project, um, we consulted um, with members of the NHS, of the General Medical Council, of the Health um, Council, all sorts of all that related stuff. So they were definitely involved and we got to meet them, talk to them, network with them, add them on LinkedIn. Um, so, yeah, you do definitely get to work very closely with the NHS. Pat. Yeah, and I suppose it goes a little bit back to what Maddie was saying, that you don't need to come with experience. We start with a series of, of masterclasses where you will hear from um, members of the NHS who will talk to you about what the priorities of the NHS are, talk about the long term plan. Um, we had Ruth May, the um, senior nurse who came and spoke um, this year at the beginning, um, along with some other senior members. And we tried to get um, NHS sort of policy leads who can talk about some of the areas that you may want to work on and then through the journey that you go on when you start sort of focusing on a specific area whether that's digital mental health services or widening access and participation you can then have that link to that kind of specific area because as you will all be aware the NHS is such a, a vast organisation that um, you need to kind of find the niche and link in um, directly. Maddie were you at the um, session with the CEO Amanda Pritchard do you want to um, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so really excitingly in June this year, we got to meet with Amanda Pritchard to discuss the work that we'd been doing in our subgroups. So we spoke about what we had achieved, what our surveys had found out. So when you start off your subgroup topic, you discuss things that you're passionate about or interested about or that maybe stuck in your mind. You've seen a poster somewhere or something's happened and you thought, you know what, this is, this is something that's piqued my interest. So we then go into our subgroups, we meet with so many members of the NHS, it's amazing. They give so much valuable insight from their own experiences, which is great. And we then presented this to Amanda Pritchard. So we discussed our findings, um, the actions we were taking. So my group focused on how to improve widening access for higher education to healthcare courses. And what we found was, you know what, some groups had maybe been entirely missed off, some groups have been underrepresented on the eligibility criteria for widening access. And we ended up writing an open letter to universities to kind of tackle this or to flag this up to them. And Amanda Pritchard was great. She was really supportive of this. She was like, you know what, yes, I'm going to support you, make sure universities actually read this letter and respond to it. So yeah, it was great to meet Amanda Pritchard as well. She was really receptive to what we were saying. And it did show that the NHS really does care about what our young people say. And it's not just those on the forum, because the members of those on the forum, they advocate on behalf of the young people who answer our surveys. We try to keep as many young people as possible at the heart of what we do. And the leadership of the NHS are really receptive to that. Right, are we ready for the next question? I feel a bit like I'm on um, <laughs> like a quiz show. Um, what do you do in a youth forum meeting? Um, yeah, Kat, do, do you want to answer that one, actually? Because um, is it still the same format? I don't want to give out wrong information. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can answer it, but sorry, just pass it round. Maddie, do you want to answer that as you've had the most recent experience? Yeah, it felt a bit weird asking a question and then responding to it. Um, so we have monthly U4 meetings where we catch up and we meet as a whole group. In your subgroups, you might meet a bit more often just to discuss the project. So it does kind of depend on which meeting you're going to. Subgroup is often more poly like work based as what we need to get done, deadlines. But with meeting as a whole group, it's really lovely just to catch up, see how people are doing. We often play some games to start it off. So just having a nice catch up. 
Um, sometimes we have masterclasses, so it could be developing skills such as Canva or public speaking or data analysis. Just a ch check in with all um, the youth team who support us at the NHS Youth Forum. So how's your project going? Do you need a bit more help? Often at the end of each meeting, we have time to go out into breakout rooms just to discuss our project, see what bit, what support we need, if we're coming up to a deadline and what we need to get a move on with. But yeah, so that's another thing I mentioned is you're entirely supported in every step of the way on the NHS U Forum. You're never just left floating aimlessly. You know, you get check-ins and you've got support 110% of the way. So don't worry if you think, you know what, maybe I will need a bit more support. That's definitely offered. So, Kat, I'll direct this one to you. What advice do you have for a good application? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, that's that's quite a hard one. I think it's it's really to show what we've said. Really, really to show um, your passion and commitment. To youth voice and to making a, a positive change. Um, it doesn't have to be rooted in any specific experience. It's just that kind of willingness um, to want to work with other young people, to want to represent other young people. Um, and that's, yeah, and that's, yeah, that is kind of what we're looking for. So you can do that via um, written, you can do a quick voice audio um or you can do a short um video whichever is kind of the easiest for you um uh yeah so i think i don't know if that's helpful because but um yeah that is really yeah i'll jump in i would say mm. there's probably no one type of good application there's probably various different ways you can make a good application um i would just say like be really honest. Um, if you have got experiences, definitely include them. If you don't, maybe include things like from school, after school club, like where you can demonstrate where you've had communication skills or teamwork skills or why you're passionate about working with young people and advocating for our voices or healthcare. So take what angle you think meets um, your criteria the best. Um, and hopefully, um, yeah, that, that will be uh, make a good application for you. Yeah, no, definitely. Be enthusiastic, be passionate, but also don't be worried if you don't have the experience because you're going to learn it. So, Nikita, what was your favourite part of being on the forum? Oh, that's really hard. Um, I think overall it was just being able to be part of the project around health inequalities because the previous year, so this was before the BLM movement, um, me and another member, Samia, we'd already proposed to British Youth Council that we want the British Youth Council to make it a priority. So we made it into a motion, which people then voted for, and it did get passed. And so it was already on the agenda. And I was really proud that we were making it a part of the agenda before like, it got so much representation um, after what happened in America. Um, and I think I'm just really proud of that, that we were ahead of the game. We were already seeing like some of those issues that are constantly affecting our community, our healthcare, and actually being able to tell the decision makers at the round table that we held, hey, look, we aren't getting the healthcare that we deserve. And here is the evidence because we produced a survey um, which we conducted with about 20, 30 different universities and um, hundreds of replies and we were able to present that evidence and graphs and it was just really nice to be able to like here's the receipt basically um please can you act on it here are our solutions and I, yeah i was really proud of that yeah no that sounds amazing i'll definitely say i mean picking a favorite part is difficult can we have favorite parts please <laughs> like can we reread the question um i would say like being able to be part of a group of really like passionate and strong-minded young people was great because it was great to like bounce off one another and think of solutions and think outside the box and really motivate one another being 
surrounded by loads of passionate people is honestly amazing because it's like yes I'm gonna do this um also just you know making some really good friends and developing skills that I probably wouldn't have even tried so being pushed out of my comfort zone you know using Canva I, I honestly never would have <laughs> done it we started a meeting it's like he's gonna do the report and I was like it's Canva please don't look at me and then I ended up doing it but yeah so just meeting loads of amazing young people and being pushed outside my comfort zone was honestly great and finally, do you have to do a medical degree or science A-levels to be a part of the forum? And I'm just going to jump in and say definitely, definitely not. The NHS Youth Forum has over 350 jobs in it and you don't have to be clinically interested in the NHS. It could be you're interested in the business management side or the policy side or the EDI side. It could be any part of the NHS and if you're passionate about it and you really want to make a difference then apply don't be held back by the misconception that it's just for people who are interested in the clinical side of the NHS because it's not the NHS is there for everyone it's so many different career avenues so many different themes to it that is definitely not just clinical Kat Nikita do you want to jump in yeah I would say um well I did an economics degree I was interested in the policy side, the business side, and just from a personal perspective, being advocate um, for young people and for our health, because health affects everyone, as the COVID-19 pandemic showed. Um, so that was, um, yes, yeah, so you definitely don't need, you don't even need to be doing a degree. If you're 14 and not even started your GCSEs yet, but you're interested, then absolutely your application is just as valuable as anybody who's at university. Yeah, and I guess just to add, remember when we we are looking at applications, we will be writing diverse representation. So we will, we will no doubt have um, a couple of young people who are um, studying medicine, but we will also be making sure, um, actively making sure that not that you know all young people are going down that route because that is not what we're looking for. A whole a whole group of young people all doing the same thing. So um, in some ways, it might be an advantage if you're not in your application. Right, well, that is all the questions. If you think of any more or you leave the meeting and think, oh, I wish I'd asked that, please drop us an email. We're more than happy to answer them. And if we don't know the answer, we'll make sure to pass them on to the correct people. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to come listen to us this evening. If you're watching it on recording, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, Nikita, Kat, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for listening. Please do uh, apply. It's so worth it. Um, and just a reminder that the deadline is Sunday, the 14th of August at 11.45 p.m. Yep, thank you and look forward to receiving your applications.